Okay, check this out. We have Chris. Introduce Chris. Chris is actually not from this area. You are from Paducah, Kentucky. Paducah. 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 Never Kentucky. even heard of it. <laughs> Nonetheless, Kentucky. So let me give you some background on this moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the gold, the horrid gold stock Chevy bow tie emblem on the front and the rear. So you found me because you're rolling into town. I don't know. You probably did some research prior to coming to California, right? Yeah, well, well one of my buddies did. He did that, and uh, we thought we could do it. Yeah. And it, I don't have the patience right. at and all. And you and I were talking about that. Yes, sir. It's one thing to know how to do it, but then you also are required to have a certain amount of discipline and patience. So this is part of these videos, and there's quite a few of these debadging emblem or debadging videos. Okay. And so that's going to lead into a further discussion, but that's also what I want to talk to some of the viewers because there's the do-it-yourselfers like yourself, Yeah. but you think, oh, I could probably learn how to do it on YouTube, and at a level you can, but that's only half the equation. Exactly. So <laughs> that's where I feel people's pain where it's like, wow, do I try this myself? Do I think I can do it? I've got to round up all the tools, yep. and I can watch Darren do it, and it looks pretty straightforward, but you've got to remember, I've done probably hundreds of these jobs by this point. So that's like any profession. You know, when, when a guy knows what he's doing, it right. always looks easy. Yes. What I was thinking about after you and I left, because this truck, which is a pretty badass truck, by the way, let me show you guys, because it's all tricked out. What, Chris, what year is this? It's a 2014. Okay, so 2014. So because they make cars earlier than the actual year, this truck could be close to three years old by this point, correct? Yes, sir. Did you buy it brand new or are you original owner, second yes. owner? You bought it brand new? Okay, so that means I can verify the history of this truck. But if you're a detailer, you have to remember that even the owner, if he's the original owner, may not remember everything. For example, this car over here I bought from the original owner. He swore up and down there was no paint body work done on it, when in fact I know there was. Is that because he's a liar or he just has forgotten? I think it's because he forgot. Because life happens and we get involved with life. The thing I want to illustrate on this is the fact that you think, okay, newer truck, straightforward, no problem. Well, the variables are that this is a black truck. Everything on black is more difficult. Now, dirt will collect inside these areas. And as you drive down the road, it will vibrate and it will literally abrade the paint. Now, the metal or the plastic part is not touching the paint. But what happens is the dirt settles within there and it settles right on the double-sided tape. So it will abrade an outline of this emblem. So it's one thing to remove it and know that it's gonna be gone completely. Now we're replacing it, but I know when I remove it, I'm gonna to have to do some polishing of this area with a buffer in order to kind of, well, essentially polish it out, smooth it out so that I have a clean slate in which to apply the new one to. So, the point I'm making, or the reason I'm making this point, is because Chris was asking like, hey, can the dealer do this work? Well, I don't know, it's probably a case by case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the front one, and yes, as I've said to you guys, I'm gonna lift my skirt pretty, hot, pretty far up, but I'm not gonna lift it all the way. I still make money doing this, and Chris here, he's already signed on to the Auto Fetish Touch. So he's committed to having me do it. I'll let him watch and observe if he wants to. Maybe in the future you'll have another truck, who knows. Point is, is I still make a living doing this, so I'm not gonna show you exactly how I replace the front one. Just know that if you try to go through the top, there's all kinds of shrouding, all kinds of things you gotta remove. So what I do is I actually go underneath. So that's my big little secret that I'm gonna give away as I access it from underneath. Okay, we have removal. This is what it looks like. The stock replacement one is just gonna snap right into that. And there is my assortment of tools that I use. And um, just a brief shot. 
so I'll show just so you can uh, fully appreciate the moment I'm gonna clean up the area first And here we have the stock replacement. Do you have those uh, other ones? The metal one? The metal. Now these were the original ones that he got online. Now check this out. These are solid metal. They're very heavy. Now you'll notice that on the back there's only four strips of double-sided tape. Now personally I do not consider that enough tape to hold a metal and you can see the part number, M96091. I don't know exactly where he got them from, but to me, this is inferior, even though it's metal, and you might think, oh, I want metal, and this is just cheap plastic. Well, yeah, but this whole grill is plastic, and this snaps right into place. Now, these fasteners, if you look closely, and I don't know if it's gonna reveal it, but it actually shows the receiver they tap into this and they uh, have threads so that you can thread in a little receiver bolt. But from the face of it, you can actually see little divots from those receivers. So the goal is, is that you would put this here and it kind of fits, but it's not flush. Like as I'm sitting here checking this out, there's these big fat gaps around here. So in theory, you think, oh, well, this is better. It's metal, it's all black. This is cheap, it's plastic, and it still has the chrome um, frame around it. Well, guess what? The fr uh, grill is still chrome itself. So I would have to use separate fasteners from behind to get this to fasten on, and it's so heavy you would really have to torque those down. And the problem with these is they're really not quality um, receivers. Be why? Well, because I'm speaking from experience. So if you think you're gonna torque this down tight enough where it's gonna be able to handle and absorb all the endless vibrations as you're driving for the next few years, dismiss that idea, because it's not gonna happen. What you would have to use, in my opinion, would be you would torque it down just tight enough so it's tight, but use some Loctite to make sure that those will not unfasten by themselves through the vibration. But once again, it's not completely flush. It's sloppy. It's not a perfect fit. This, on the other hand, my friends, it's got the exact OE. OE stands for Original Equipment. And I know that this will snap right into place. But ba bam, there we have it. Absolute perfection. And that's what we want. Time to work on the back end. So just as a little uh, preview, here's all my various tools. I've got my heat gun, my eraser tool, the 3M eraser tool attached to my drill motor. I've got my rupees 21, uh, what do they call this? The Bigfoot 21. I'm gonna use Minzerna. Boy, I've forgotten how much I love Minzerna. The FG 400 to cut it, and then the PF 2500 to finish with. My fishing line. Yes, I actually use my Rack Attack Rolling Creeper every single day, and I love it. I know many of you think it's overpriced that I think it's like 170 but I'm telling you it saves the knees it saves the back and I absolutely love it all I'm doing is I'm removing the superficial dirt so as I'm working I'm not transferring that dirt into the my into my work area got my fishing line this is 25 pound test 
I have recently purchased some 30 pound tests to see if I can uh, keep it from breaking a little more often, or I should say a little less often. Essentially what I'm trying to do is heat this up so that the heat dissipates to the double-sided tape behind it without heating the paint up to the point where it would cause damage. This I don't care about because this is just gonna get thrown away. So you just kinda of have to finesse it because if you flash heat it, it's just going to heat the surface and it's not gonna actually heat up the double-sided tape behind it. So you have to just finesse it and that's why you'll see in my videos I'm checking the paint temperature. But this is like, gets really, really hot. This gets hot and then it dissipates the heat to the uh, tape behind it. Welcome to Darren's world of trying to film on location. Endless background noises. And at this point, what you do is you are literally cutting through the double-sided tape, and you hope that you cut through the tape before you cut through your fingers. I keep thinking I'm gonna wear gloves, and then I keep just not wearing gloves. Now I slice through that side, I'm going to reheat this side up and then come on the opposite side and yes, obviously I found my gloves. Now I'm not going to be able to fill the paint so this is just where experience kicks in and I know how hot this gun gets and I know how long I need to heat it up. I also know that I've already heated, up, heated it up to a certain degree already. So it's not going to require as much heat the second time around. And that is oh so much friendlier on the fingers. And we have breakage. Now when you lift this off, you've got to do it, finesse it from both sides. Otherwise, if you pry it up like this, you run the risk of prying it up so much that this edge starts gouging into that paint. So I know, like anything else, if you know how to do it, you can make it look easy, but there's all these little nuances, these little booby traps that you don't necessarily realize when you're just watching it video form. So I'm trying to explain as much of it as possible. Now I want to clean this off, and I'm gonna to switch to the eraser tool. Here we have the 3M eraser tool, and here we have this little beauty, which is put out by Dynablade. And I thought this was gonna be the winning combination. It's an air tool, and it is way faster. The problem is, is it smears, for lack of a better word, it just smears and makes a bigger mess with this uh, adhesive tape. Now this might be quicker on decals, but when it comes to this really thick double-sided tape. This not only removes it, but it gets a cleaner effect so that at the very end, I can simply use my rapid remover and remove trace residue. So to me, this is the winning combination, despite that being faster. Yes, it's faster, but it's not faster to the finished result.
the reason I go back over it um, is because I want to do as much of the removal with the eraser tool rather than trying to get it with the, the uh, rapid remover. And as a word of caution, if you have any of the, what's it called, Plastidip, it's become very popular out there in the world, Plastidip. Essentially what you do is you black things out. It, it probably comes in different colors, but the point is, is Plastidip is what I call semi-permanent. And let's say there was, like let's say this had been Plastidip. If I get this rapid remover on it, it will start to melt it away because it's an adhesive remover and kind of works on rubberized type of materials. So what this is revealing is a very definitive, a very definite line, as I discussed at the beginning, that shows exactly like the paint that has been exposed to the sun. You've got a little tiny chip here, which I can actually fix with some touch-up paint because that's also the ripple effect of polishing out a car or doing something like this is I'm going to prepare the area so nicely that it will actually reveal the blemishes that are already there to a higher degree because before they were kind of hidden by the badge itself, dirt, go down the list. So that's kind of the unforeseen consequence of polishing paint to perfection is that it actually reveal, reveals imperfections. So I'm going to hit this with a buffer and if this customer had decided to leave this off I would have had a pretty extensive conversation with them to let them know that there might be a shadow after three to four years of sun exposure there could be a permanent shadow and if I was going to fix this as best as possible I would have to wet sand this flat because there's literally a, a, a edge that's been worn but because we're replacing it I don't have to worry about that but I do want to fix this area and make it as much as good of a uh, canvas as possible before I place that new emblem got my rupees 21 Bigfoot 21 millimeter throw I'm gonna use the Menzerna oh and this is the Americana global foam pad which so far I absolutely love That's about all the polish I'm going to need for this. Remove this polish. <laughs> Clean my pad and then I'll graduate into the Minzerna PF2500. Once again, that's the extent of the polish I'm using. Now because we would like the emblem to stick as long as possible, I'm going to now use my alcohol water solution. Make sure I have complete removal of any polish. So I have as thorough of adhesion of the new emblem or badge, bow tie, as possible after it's applied then I can wax this, uh, the surrounding areas. But right now I want to make sure it's a very clean surface. So there we have polished, cleaned, and it has removed a large extent of that um, outline, but it is by no means perfect. But we do not need that type of perfection in this moment.
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a line that is parallel. Now even when you use tape, there's a chance for the tape to get distorted as you pull it. So even that has to be finessed. So this now is an alignment. This bottom piece or this bottom horizontal edge will be where I align the new emblem. And this is aligned with this. So that when we pull back, and this is where I double check, is I pull back and I verify that that tape looks in alignment with the rest of the truck. That's what I'm looking for. If I know I have that, and then I position the emblem right there in a direct alignment with the tape, then I know everything else will fall into place. So that's what I'm verifying now. Now, if you really wanted to, you could actually tape up this new emblem prior to placement and verify even further, which at this point, now this has a natural crease right here, and there's a little uh, rear view backup camera there that's right in the middle. So that's where I'm gonna place it. So you could, if you wanted, even do this. And then you could stand back and verify once again the problem with doing that is now you've got different lines going different places and it's really would be hard to tell which is why I don't do that as a rule but for those that really want to overthink things there's many ways to get this done right this is just simply the way I do it Here's the backing. And what's cool about the stock OE emblem is that it's got the full double-sided tape. Now remember, okay, and here's another little moment, is you can actually place this just enough where it sticks without fully putting it in place. And then you remove this, remove that, and we pull back and we verify that yes, in fact, that is aligned horizontally to the closest body line or embellishment of the truck. In this case, it's the handle. The second thing would be here, but even the emblem would have to be perfectly parallel. So if you were to take out a, like a micrometer or some other type of measuring device, you might find that these two horizontal lines are not exactly parallel. So if you align this bottom with this, suddenly you may realize that this top is not in alignment with that. Therefore, because this is the closest point that the eye will go to, I want to make sure that those two are in alignment. Now the truck is uh, tilted a little bit because it's been lifted and it's on my uneven driveway. So I'm trying to compensate for that with this shot. So at this point I'm just going to press to secure it without damaging the emblem or pressing so hard. We don't need to go level 10 at this moment. Let me get a little touch-up paint, touch up that little spot. Why? Because it's always about the details. Let's take note as to how this project grew from something that would, at a casual level, seem very straightforward. Now I just busted out my touch-up kit. It's applied colors. Yes, it's worthy of another video, 
which I'm not going to do in the moment. I'm just going to allow you to observe and offer just a couple of my little tricks. One of them is these readers. They magnify the area. And this is just one little spot. So if I can magnify that area and nail it at this level, I know, bam, done just like that. Point is, is if I magnify it, when I pull back under normal viewing conditions, it's gonna look that much better. So that's a way to scrutinize your work as you're working and to achieve a higher level of performance. Hey Chris, do you want to come and take a look? <clears throat> that black looks a, a little better, huh? Looks a lot better. Yeah, what is this <laughs> really... yeah that, that, that yellow is just, and that's just me. It's pretty horrid. That's just me too. I like <laughs> Yeah, especially on a, you know, truck like this that looks so bitchin'. It's got the black, the chrome. That's a good contrast. And now we just maintain that theme, removing the yellow, replacing with the black. It's a stock OE, perfect, uh, you know, positioning. And we're good to go. Any last uh, parting comments? Uh, other than thank you very much. So knowing what you know now, do you think it's something you could have done? Are you glad? Here, you come over here. <clears throat> what do you think? You're like, oh, I probably could have tackled it. So, Based on everything you saw. Everything I see here, tools. this is more money spent, and I'm glad that I did bring it to you. I, I mean, this is just, it seems like a small project. It, yeah, it but does. <clears throat> it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you don't have the right tools. Right, right. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Imagine chasing down all these individual yeah. tools. You probably get halfway through it, think, "Oh, that's right. We need this, or we need that." So, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. It is. I mean, this is, this and this is, is part of the strategy. Sorry to cut you off. No this is part of the strategy is letting them know what they're signing on to, because a lot of guys, especially the do-it-yourselfers, think, "Oh, that's a that's a cakewalk. Yeah. I can do that. I've seen all of Darren's videos. I can nail it." It's like, well, then go for it. Yeah. But if not, call me. Call him. And I'd call him again. I will take care of it for you. <laughs> I would. I mean, I'm a do it yourself kind of guy, but this is just these newer trucks, but just so much stuff you got to remove. And if you yeah. don't know the tricks and you don't have the right tools. Yeah, so never mind it. the cost of this truck. Is that really worth It's like, oh, if I screw it up, it's like, right? wow, is that really worth it to exactly. save myself a, a few bucks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and cool. the patience, you need patience. And I, I don't have the patience. I, did, I didn't, I mean, and plus I don't have, have these tools here. Yeah, right. You know, so, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it, this is all money spent. Good. And yeah, that's what I like to hear. I appreciate it. All right, and lot. they say thank you too, by the way. Thank you guys. And I'll let you know when it's posted on YouTube and you cool. can check it out. Cool, thank you.